Ninety writers, poets, and thinkers came together to make this book possible. 400 Souls is a history that illuminates our past. 400 Souls by Ibram X. Kendi and Keisha N. Blaine is a number one New York Times bestseller and available now wherever books and audiobooks are sold. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, this is Jenny Walker, and welcome to Closet Conversations. Today I want to talk to you about investing money in dry cleaning and repair and refreshing reselling inventory. Now, this is something that I do regularly, and recently I went to my favorite Oak Knoll Cleaners here in Pasadena, California, and spent $145 and picked up three different batches of uh, repair and dry cleaning I had left for them, and I realized that that was a lot of money, and uh, <laughs> I realized that I hadn't really talked about it. So I just wanted to uh, tell you my thoughts and uh, let you know why why it cost that much and what was done. So part of my thinking is what I love so much about reselling and being sustainable is really kind of being the caretaker to find things that you feel like are amazing that have more life left in them and kind of refurbishing them and bringing them back into the marketplace. And a lot of inventory that I see, I mean, there, you know, there's problems, especially when you're dealing with things that are maybe from the 70s, even the 80s, 90s. If something's been stored improperly, it has was put away with maybe someone spilled some wine on it or has a small spot on it and no one knew. And then, you know, 20, 30 years later, it's, you know, it's kind of set in. Uh, depending on what's happening with the garment, it's whether or not you have a good opportunity to get it get it refreshed and refurbished to sell it again. So I have always felt like this was a really important part of reselling. And certainly if you're going to specialize in really high end vintage, it it needs to be in its the best shape possible. You know, if buttons are loose, have them tightened. If there's strings hanging off, cut those out. Um, if the hem is falling, have it repaired. And certainly if it, it, it should be dry cleaned. And at the minimum, most minimum thing in the world a garment needs to be is clean. And this is something that um, people go round and round about. But in my mind, it's really obvious. If I'm trying to get uh, top dollar for a vintage, say, Yves Saint Laurent dress or gown or something like that it's got to be clean it's got to be clean and i mean the kind of clean that's more than just steaming right and there's actually at my at my dry cleaners there's this one little uh bar that they have and that where somebody i don't know who it is some client of theirs always brings in this really high end vintage and it just sits there in one spot and i'll see it from time to time when i go in there and i have taken a look at some of these pieces and they are in Incredible, and you can see why they're in there, and you can see why these people are investing in the money to have them refreshed and cleaned and ready. Because if you're going to ask six hundred dollars, a thousand dollars for something or more, it's got to be clean. It's got to be professionally clean, the kind of clean that even steaming alone can't handle. And as I've talked to you about in previous podcasts, when I steam all of my clothing, and it's during that process that I'll find hidden stains, hidden hidden problems. And to me, I'm always having to make a judgment call. Do I think it's worth it to spend the money to invest? So I had 13 pieces that I picked up, and it was $145. It's approximately $11.15 per item for what I had done. Some were repairs. Some were repairs and cleaning. Some were – one was just steaming. And I want to kind of go through – why I had this done, um, and why I think that it was worth the money to invest in it. So an extra $11 per piece on each item. And, you know, in terms of I try not to sell items that aren't worth a certain amount of money. So if I've bought it very inexpensively and I'm paying another $11 to get it in top shape, that's not going to be a problem for me depending on how much I'm trying to get for the item. So one of the items that was in this batch is this absolutely amazing baby blue 1970s maxi dress, the kind of dress you can get married in. be great for like a barn wedding, something like that. That's the retro, very popular right now. And I was getting ready to 
photograph it and put it out, and then I noticed it had some some spots on it, and I thought, okay, this has got to go to the cleaners because these are these are things that I can't deal with. I don't actually try to get spots out. I never do. I always take it to the cleaners. So I took it to them, and it's come back. It is absolutely beautiful. It is fresh as a daisy. <laughs> it's perfect for someone who's looking to get married, and you know, to me, eleven dollars it was completely worth it because this is a gown that's going to be hundreds of dollars. You know, I'm not going to ask you know fifty bucks for this thing. You know, this is something that will be hundreds of dollars, uh, maybe three, four hundred. And so, to me, to invest, you know, if I invested say nine dollars on the dress and eleven dollars on the cleaning, so I've got what twenty dollars in it now. So I have no problem with that. And then on a personal level, there's something really satisfying about bringing something back. To where it was and it's sort of like that feeling that I used to get when I'd take my favorite shoes to the cobbler and then I'd get them back and the heels were all perfect and just that feeling of having it back to where it needs to be in really good shape I just love that feeling always <laughs> get picking up my shoes and that's how I feel when I get something back from the dry cleaner and they've tightened the buttons or they've cleaned it and they've brought it they've steamed it and it's one of the things that I had was um, a mosquito jacket that I had yeah, you know, I receive it in the mail, things are crumpled up, and I tried to steam it out, and I felt like I was going to ruin it trying to steam it with my uh, equipment because it was just a lot of this Moschino is super, super fragile acetate. I don't know, acetate was really popular for a while. It is a terrible fabric. It is it is not nice. So you sometimes, depending on how it is, it's just you can't get it the way you want it to be without uh, you know, potentially getting the steam too close. So I took it to the cleaners and all they did was steam it. It's still brand new with the tags on it and it looks amazing and they did a great job, something that I was not able to accomplish on my own. So I was happy to do that. Another dress that I took was one of these, um, it's a Ted Baker dress, uh, this beautiful melon color, like perfect to go to someone's wedding in or a garden party. But it's that neoprene material like scuba fabric. And I have realized that every time I've had something with uh, scuba fabric, they're always able to get the spots out. I had one beautiful dress. I still have it. It's for sale in my Poshmark closet. Um, it was a Ted Baker, beautiful dress, and they were able to get it like brand new. So when I took this, I was confident they'd be able to get it clean, and they were. So to me, that's a dress that's, you know, uh, close to hundred dollars when I list it. Um, I don't, I don't know yet, but to me, totally worth a twenty dollar, having twenty dollars in that garment for something going to sell at that price. Plus, it looks amazing, right? And a lot of these brands, they they change ownerships, they change kind of how they get manufactured, and sometimes the older pieces are more interesting, better made, etc. Some other things I'm looking at is I had two vintage uh, black wool tuxedo jackets that I got, and in both cases, the lining was ripped. Uh, one, it had something all over it. Now, these things look like they're from probably like the 30s, so I paid very little for them at the time, and I bought them at a, a place where I know the person who runs it, and I, I don't really ask for discounts, but in this one, I was just like, look how messed up this is. <laughs> I'm willing to bring it, try to bring it back to life if the price is right. So I ended up paying about seven fifty, seven dollars and fifty cents for these each for these two tuxedo jackets. So that plus uh, the repair cost and the dry cleaning. And one of them looks really good. The other one looks good, but they weren't able to get out one of the spots on the lapel. So I'll try to sell it anyway. But I still these will be things that are sold for you know, close to hundred dollars or more. So I have no problem having, you know, less than twenty dollars in each of those. There are three skirts that I had worked on. One was a vintage designer that I really didn't know who it was and I just liked the design of the skirt. It had uh, some stains at the bottom that I actually didn't notice when I bought it. Had one has a, a flaw at the waistband where the um stitching has come off or uh, or who knows, maybe a moth got to it. I'm not sure. But the design was just so adorable. I'm like, I'm going to get it anyway. And I don't usually get anything with holes in it. And that's really like a sidebar is that I really try not to do that because I keep thinking no one wants it. And every single time I pass on something amazing that has a little hole in it, it's always gone 
the next day when I go back, which means somebody else got it and they didn't mind that it had that. And I think that there's a lot of attitudes about vintage that, you know, it can have a small flaw on it and people be okay with it, right? And so I I keep coming to terms with that because I keep wanting to not not present something with too many problems in my batch of clothes that I make available. I even passed on a super rare um, Courage's um, plaid jacket from the 70s, but it had, I mean, I'm not going to say it was riddled with moth holes, but it had numerous moth holes. So I'm like, I know what this is. I'm going to get the other jacket that has that needs to be clean but doesn't have holes in it. So I go back the next day, and, of course, the one I didn't buy was gone. And I'm like, who's buying this? You know, <laughs> I'm scratching my head. Someone wanted it in that condition. These things can be repaired, but not at the dry cleaner. Like you need a specialist who's going to reweave holes and things like that. That's a whole other level. This is museum quality level where people are really uh, you know, taking it to that level. I'm not quite there yet, but it's fascinating to know that there's still a market for that. And so I think when sourcing you know, it's kind of a challenge because you're always considering what you're buying in the moment. When I go into a location and I'm there and I'm staring at everything, uh, this is, you know, in-person sourcing versus online. You know, I can look at it, I can examine it, and in that moment, I'm really not thinking about all the other things that I've ever bought or that I have at home. It's like in that moment, in that bubble, is this something that I want to to buy and try to resell? And Oftentimes, I'm drawn to something, and I don't know why, and I've got to start paying more attention to it because um, there's like some – on a, some other level, there's some information I'm not tapping into that's telling me this is important, this is worth getting. You know, there's something, and usually when I don't get something – and I think about it later, I'm like, oh, that's why that was important. Oh, that's why I was drawn to that, even though I could put my finger on it at the time. And recently, this is a sidebar, I bought this vintage hat from Casual Corner. I mean, we're talking, this is a long time ago. I grew up with Casual Corner. And there was a black wool hat with this floral print all over the uh, the top of it. And it wasn't until after I'd gotten it home, because I was having to steam it, and uh, it was a little misshapen, and... I realized it was the same print that was in two mosquito jackets that I had. And I was like, I did not even realize that at the time. So that's always nice when that works out. So anyway, back to the dry cleaning. So I'm staring at a few other things. I had dry clean. I had a, a vintage mosquito tie that it's actually something that I sourced online. And it was always um, not quite right when I got it. And I took it to them and they professionally cleaned it. And now that they've done it, I realized that the, actually the tie is um, kind of damaged. So the reason I wasn't able to get it the way it needed to be was because it's got some problems, uh, which I didn't know at the time. Didn't pay too much for it, but I know now that it's been through their process, so this is kind of as good as it's going to get so that when I list it, I can kind of know that and note that. Um, they were able to dry clean something that, I was unable off of it was this jersey material with this beautiful black leather and silver studded band um, at the bodice. And no matter what I did, no matter using tape, lint brush, steamer, could not get this thing clean. But I knew it would be worth investing money in because it's a very expensive top. And they sell for um, several hundred dollars new. So I took it to them. It looks brand new. They hand cleaned it. And they somehow, by some miracle, got all of that lint off. So I'm surprised I couldn't get the lint off by myself. But nonetheless, they were able to do it. So it was really worth it to me. Uh, one of these, whenever I buy white blouses, if they're cotton or linen, things like that, that need to be refreshed, they have certain things that they can do there depending on what the problem is. They can soak it. Um, in special solution, uh, a lot of vintage pieces they do that with. Uh, they can try traditional dry cleaning, but if it doesn't work, there's other things they can do. But I found this one amazing blouse, and I took it to them. They were able to refresh it. I have the Izzy Miyake blouse that, if you know anything about Izzy Miyake's pleats, please, items, there's so many tiny pleats that you really, there's all kinds of things hidden in the pleats. So when I went to list it, I found um, these hidden stains. They were able to get most of them out, but not all of them. 
still happy to have tried because, you know, you get the little sad face on the uh, – <laughs> the dry cleaning when you get it back if they aren't able to get it a hundred percent, but I'll still be able to sell that. I'm looking at a white vintage from the late eighties, early nineties tuxedo shirt in white that had like stains on the sleeve. They were able to lessen it but not get it out. I'll still be able to sell that. Um one skirt I had repaired where there was uh somehow it was supposed to be attached in the front and it had had come undone and they fixed that another skirt was dry cleaning um so you know i'm just looking at all of this and you know each piece it's really kind of nice knowing that it feels good knowing that it's been through the dry cleaning process or the repair process or the steaming process um it's in with all my other inventory and so i don't have to worry about odors i don't have to worry about uh, any critters that might have been on the clothes. And I can feel really, really good about listing it and doing my best to get a premium for what I have. So this is just a random example. There's nothing super special in this batch other than this beautiful blue dress from the 70s, which, let me tell you, looks so great now. Um, that probably is the most interesting piece in all of that. And I love the fact that I've brought it back to life. I love the fact that it's been refreshed. And to me, it just feels great because my attitude is I feel like I'm sort of like an archaeologist who's digging through (laughs) all the stuff that's out there, trying to find what's been overlooked, certainly what's um, undervalued, and kind of resurrect it and bring it back into the world for a second or third life. And there's something really, really exciting about finding the items and then certainly finding them in just odd little places because I've seen all kinds of things in places that they shouldn't be, right? Like one time I was in out of the closet and I came across this ridiculously amazing brand new with tags um, uh, maxi dress, a floral maxi dress by um, Rachel Zoe, uh, 100% silk. And I think I paid $15 for this. And I mean, I literally, when I looked at it, I I remember touching it and saying, what are you doing here? Like, what is it doing there? Like the most random things end up in these places. And so obviously I bought it and I sold it for hundreds of dollars, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I love the fact that I was able to kind of take it out of that environment put it back out there in the world and someone could find it and was willing to pay a premium for it. And that feels really great. Um, A lot of the vintage Moschino that I work with, you know, the biggest issue that I find with those clothes is that one um, acetate will bleed if it's wet. Um, I've seen certain kinds of materials that, that do not do well if they get something on them. I've seen them bleed in my presence. And I am, a lot of times the buttons are problematic with Moschino because some of, many of them are fabric covered buttons and they have to be sewn through the underside with the fabric. And there are times when that fabric underneath basically disintegrates. And so you don't have a way to attach the button. So I'm always looking for extra buttons so that I can complete the items because they can't be, there's nothing, they can't be used. Like there's no way to repair it, right? So, I mean, there probably is a way. (laughs) So button expert could take off, take it apart and put on another piece of fabric, but that's not, that's not in my sphere. So I want to take it to the point where, I'm replacing that button with another exact vintage button of Moschino and then bring that one piece to where it is. And sometimes when I have a hard time finding a missing button, I'll sell sell it at a discount. And it, other pe- people don't seem to buy. I, I guess I'm the only one who's bothered if <laughs> there's it has a place for four buttons and there's only three, you know, or one's missing off the cuff. And, um, that's always disappointing because I really want to put it back into its former glory, which means getting all the buttons in place and uh, putting it back out in the world. But I'm always looking for the parts. I have a spare Moschino button area for once in case I ever need to replace something or one's missing. I can feel like I can go ahead and buy because I'll be able to get that put back on. I don't even try to sew buttons on. Do not ask. Do not ask. I'm. Uh, <laughs> I take it straight to the cleaners. I'm happy. It's a dollar a button, so I'm happy to uh, to spend that, give them the business, and let the professionals 
you know, bring it back to where it needs to be. In terms of um, shoes, I have also uh, some, a lot of times when you're buying uh, shoes or boots in the secondary market, they like to write the price in very obvious places. And oftentimes you can't get it off depending on what, what they've used. So to fix that, some of the things I've done is I've had uh, on Western boots, I've had to have a cobbler sand off a layer of leather to get it off, uh, which works really well. I've also um, had to have something completely resold that was Moschino. I had to have the whole thing covered in order because no one could get it off. And I'm like, this is an amazing pair of vintage boots by Moschino. They're super unique, but you know, no one's going to want these boots with a big price written across the bottom. And it's unfortunate that a lot of um, people do this when they're selling at charity shops and thrift shops because people, unfortunately, take tags off and switch things. So they think that they're doing themselves a favor by writing it on there. But actually, they're doing a disservice to the item because you can ruin it ruin it to the point where, one, no one would want to buy it, even if it's not reselling because the price is written all over the bottom. Who wants that? Nobody. But, two, from reselling, you've got to find a way to get it off or you're going to have um, a harder time giving it a new home because it's also kind of hard to ask $50 for a pair of shoes that has, you know, seven ninety nine written on the bottom. So, you know, it's always like a push-pull. So anyway, uh, I have a great relationship with the dry cleaners here in Pasadena. Um, I've been going there for over five years. Um, they have managed to get things in amazing condition. And I'm just so pleased with what they've been able to do. And I love the feeling of having something fully refurbished and really brought back to life because so many times in this business, things are not in the condition that they need to be. Oftentimes that they are. Often like you can still find it new with tags. You can find it in amazing condition. And that's really one of the challenges that we have in finding things to resell is what's the condition and what are you willing to do about the condition or to bring it back there. And I just love it when I've gone through the trouble to refurbish it, bring it back to its glory, and watch someone else buy it, love it, and enjoy it, and give it a new home. And that is a wonderful feeling. So for me, I have no problem spending $145 or, in this case, uh, $11 per garment to have it either repaired, dry cleaned, refurbished, or both. Uh, I just think it's uh, an investment. So now, you don't want to do that on every single piece. I certainly do not dry clean and have this done on every piece that I purchase for reselling. Uh, my steamer that I have does a terrific job of fixing most of this. Um, so that is something that I do use. And if you're looking for a steamer, um, there is a link to um, to where you can get one through uh, C'est La Vie, which I know the owner of that company, they have a, you can get uh, just my special code and get free shipping and I think 10% off any order that's on my uh, link in my Instagram page. You can do that. So that is something that I'm always doing. It's, is investing, investing time, investing money and in bringing these pieces back because it feels great. It feels absolutely wonderful to see that. And so, yeah, so that's how I feel about it. I feel like, it's a wonderful thing to do is to invest money in certain pieces to bring them back to their former glory and put them back out into the world because this is the new retail and that's just a satisfying thing to do for me. And hopefully you'll consider doing that for yourself and not walk by a piece that needs a little uh, work. And obviously the more special the piece um, the more you'll feel like that work will be worth it for you. And that's it. This is Jenny Walker with Closet Conversations. I look forward to having you with me on a future episode. If you are reselling on Poshmark or eBay or Macari or any of these great places, um, I appreciate you listening to this podcast and check older editions. There might be some information you'll find helpful. And if you'd like to be in touch with me, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram where I check all my messages at Jenny Growth Closet. Thank you so much and have a great day.
Amazon is hiring near you. Looking for team members who know that their work is important and that every package matters. Find a job that fits your life with competitive wages, reliable hours, and benefits. Let's work together. From boxing it up to sending it on its way, every step offers a different role and schedule. So, are you ready to work together in your community? Visit Amazon.com slash apply to see what's available. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer. Amazon is hiring near you. Looking for team members who know that their work is important and that every package matters. Find a job that fits your life with competitive wages, reliable hours, and benefits. Let's work together. From boxing it up to sending it on its way, every step offers a different role and schedule. So, are you ready to work together in your community? Visit Amazon.com slash apply to see what's available. That's Amazon.com slash apply. Amazon is an equal opportunity employer.